His name was Father Ubold. Father Ubold was the, uh, the carrier of the message of the Center for the Secret of Peace. And he was an evangelist. He's spirit-filled, but he's an evangelist within the Catholic Church and within the nation of Rwanda. And he came to Voice of Apostles, and Tom Holloway, my assistant director, brought him to me. Uh, and we had a conversation, and he watched me pray for somebody who had some unhealed trauma. And as I was praying for this lady who was a missionary doctor, Father Ubold's face was right here, watching everything that I did. I, I don't know about if you've ever had that happen to you, but trying to do ministry with somebody while somebody's right here is, is a little intimidating. <laughs> and when I got done with the missionary doctor, he said, he grabbed me and he said, brother, would you pray for my trauma? And then he began to tell me about how his entire family, except for a brother and sister, were slaughtered in the genocide. He told me about all the people that he knew. He had to, he had to run into another country uh, to, to get away from it. But he told me about all of the trauma that he went through, and I prayed for him. And the Lord just miraculously brought tremendous healing to his trauma in that moment. And then he said to me at the end of the prayer, he kind of trapped me a little bit. He said, brother, will you come to Rwanda? And instead of doing what I normally do, I said, well, let me check my schedule. I said, of course I'll come to Rwanda. <laughs> little did I know that he did the same thing to Leif Hetland and Joanne Moody. <laughs> so we, I, we were actually scheduled to go in May of 2020 to Rwanda. And, of course, you all know what happened in 2020. I'm tired of talking about it, but I'm just saying you all know what happened, right? So this last August, we went under the invitation. Father Ubald, by the way, came to the States. He attended Global Summer Intensive, and then he caught COVID here, and he passed away. But we made a promise to him that we would come. So under the auspices of the Catholic Church and the Center for the Secret of Peace, we went Joanne Moody, Leif Hetland, myself, and a team of eight from Joanne's ministry. And we went for 12 days and ministered in two locations, bringing not only what Leif brings about the three chairs and you know, identity. How many of you know that teaching from Leif? Joanne bringing all the amazing things that she does about impartation. And I, I taught on trauma. And the first day that we landed in Kigali, um, they took us to the Genocide Museum. And at the Genocide Museum in Kigali, there are 250,000 bodies buried there. And it, it helps you tell the story, understand how the genocide happened that went back all the way to when the Belgians colonized Rwanda and took them from a nation of farmers who they never knew what other people's tribes were. And because the Belgians required them to have identification cards, they separated the people by their tribes. So the majority party were the Hutus, the minority party were the Tutsis, and then the, origin, the natives of the land, the Twa, were another tribe. And because of what white people did to bring what white people thought was the right structure to their culture, it began to set up a series of events and understanding where the majority party began to dehumanize the minority party. How many of you feel some of that happening in the world today? Anybody? Beginning to say that you don't count, you don't matter any longer. And in 1994, after the deaths of the president of Rwanda and the president of Burundi, who were both of the majority party, the government began to put out an edict that it was the civic duty of every member of the Hutu tribe to take their machetes, to take their hoes, to take any kind of instrument they could and kill as many Tutsis as they possibly could. 
Now this, you know, when I heard about this back in the 90s, I thought this was in, you know, thatched huts and like out in the middle of the jungle. No, Kigali is a very modern city with Kentucky Fried Chicken and McDonald's and very much like our cities. But this took place over a period of 100 days where over a million people were slaughtered by their fellow countrymen. And by the way, at the time, Rwanda was considered to be 85% Christian. We had such an amazing time for those 12 days ministering. In the last few days, we were in Kigali. And uh, we were on a Sunday morning, and we had priests there. We had members of orders there. We had about 1,700 people in the building. And as I taught on trauma, I kept hearing this thing, the Holy Spirit, over and over again, ask for their forgiveness, ask for their forgiveness, ask for their forgiveness. And I knew what identificational repentance was. Yeah, how many of you know what I'm talking about? Where we stand in the place of people who have done wrong and ask for forgiveness. I knew what that was, but I, I checked with my team, and they said, we'll stand with you if that's what God is telling you to do. So I stood just like right here in a room of 1,700 people, and I began to tell them about their history that I had perceived from walking through the Genocide Museum and what white people had done to them to ruin their culture and actually set it up for the foundations of genocide and how when the genocide was taking place they reached out to the other countries of the world and nobody sent any help whatsoever 